David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today I have a very special pen from one of my favorite brands, and that brand is Sailor. Uh, every year, Fountain Pen Day falls right around my birthday, so I try to order something a little extra special. Um, last year, for instance, I picked up the Edison Menlo Pump Filler, which I still really love. Uh, it's a pen that made my final top 10 list of this year. And the pen I picked up this year for my birthday slash Fountain Pen Day is one that will be very difficult to leave off of next year's final top 10 list. And that is the Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear. What I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of this pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, show some comparisons between this pen and some of the other Sailor pens, so show some measurements, some additional size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. That's a lot. So uh, the pen arrived in this box. Uh, you know, I had pen, uh, Ron over at Pen Chalet special order this for me. I know you can't see it in the camera, but my name is indented on the box. Someone put a sticky note or something on the box and then wrote my name on it and made an impression. I just thought that was kind of funny. Uh, inside, we have a box, which I find to be a little bit odd. It just looks and feels a bit dated. This brown felt just reminds me of something that would have been produced in the early 1980s. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, that really doesn't matter because it's what's on the inside of the box that matters. But what is inside of the box, uh, it is uh, lined in a padded silky material with the Sailor logo embossed in gold. And included in the box is a, uh, a nice Sailor polishing cloth. Then we have uh, an instruction manual. Then we also have two uh, Sailor black ink cartridges. Uh, Sailor does use a proprietary size, so you need to use either Sailor branded cartridges or converters. Uh, and the pen does come with the Sailor converter as well. And then we have the pen, the Sailor King of Pen Professional Gear. This particular model has a gold trim. It is also available in the rhodium trim. Uh, and you'll see in the size comparisons, uh, this is not the longest pen. It, you know, it's rather short and stout, but, um, you know, it, well, it's shorter than other King of Pen models, but compared to uh, a standard uh, Sailor Pro Gear, you can see here that it is considerably longer, as well as much thicker. Uh, and then here is the Pro Gear 2. Uh, that uh, is just slightly longer, but you can still see that it uh, looks pretty small compared to the King of Pen. Uh, the, the King of Pen Pro Gear is made from a, a high quality resin, which I really find uh, to feel very similar to that of like the Mont Blanc 146 and 149. So let's take a look at the parts of this pen. We'll start here at the finial, which I really like. It has the Sailor Anchor logo, uh, and on top there and then there is a gold band now the band isn't completely flat there's kind of a raised portion in the middle which gives the the band a, a bit of texture uh, and then we have the clip uh, it's the exact same clip that's on the uh, king of pens ebonite i have it here as well you can see that that's the very same clip other than this is the rhodium plated and this is the gold plated uh, and it's also the very same clip that's used on the classic pens lb5 you can see here that they're exactly the same uh, you know, it's also the same design that's on the standard Pro Gear, but it's just a little bit larger to match the size of this pen. Uh, the cap angles up to a rather wide cap band. And, uh, you know, this is the same style of cap band that is found on this LB5, uh, but the lettering is different. And this one actually says Sailor Japan founded 1911. You know, I. I like these microscope pictures here, but I, I hate that you can see all of the small scratches that the naked eye can't pick up. Uh, it makes the pen look a little old and beat up. You know, I like the style of this band. Uh, there's uh, a grooved band, then there's lettering and an interesting font, and then kind of a flatter portion which tapers down to the peril. It just looks a little complex and I enjoy that. Um, the barrel also tapers down to the end where we have another gold band, and then there's a flat end with some rounded edges. The cap twists off to reveal one of my favorite parts of this pen, the two-toned 21 karat gold nib. You know, I just think this thing is beautiful. 
First of all, you know, I like the looks of most two-toned nibs. This is a huge number nine nib, which is actually the same size nib that can be founded on a, a, Mont, a Mont Blanc 149. You know, I like the scroll work on this nib, uh, and I like how the nib creep kind of fills in the swirls. I just think that looks pretty cool. Then the nib is stamped with 1911, the anchor logo, 21K, 875, which means the nib is 87.5% gold, then Sailor and Japan. Something I thought was interesting was that the anchor on the nib is different than the anchor that's on the finial. Uh, here you can see them side by side. Uh, the one on the, uh, the nib has raised sections throughout the anchor, uh, as well as a more pronounced fluke, which are kind of the two little arrowhead shaped pointy things on either side of the anchor. Uh, and also the one on the nib has holes through the end of the anchor's uh, stock, which is the bar going across the top. I just thought that was interesting. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. The section is slightly flared at the end and then angles up to a gold band which transitions to the cap threads and then there's a very slight step up to the barrel which isn't sharp at all. Um, the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted. Uh, the cap does post uh, and it does post securely. Uh, but And I don't find that it uh, throws off the balance of this pen at all. I find this pen to be very comfortable in the hand. Um, you know, the section is a bit on the thick side, but I like it. Um, you know, I couldn't get a decent picture of it. Maybe you can see it here. Uh, the difference between the section of the standard Pro Gear and the King of Pen Pro Gears. Not sure if you can get a good idea of that, but you can just see how much more uh, thick the King of Pen is. You know, the, uh, in regard to the section uh, and the nib unit of the King of Pen Pro Gear, it uses the same unit as each of the other King of Pen models I've seen. Um, it's the exact same unit as the Ebonite model as well as the LB5s. You know, I find it interesting, though, that I have four of these nibs and all of them are mediums and they each have their own distinct personality. Um, the one on my Ebonite is my favorite, uh, but this one here on the Pro Gear comes a very close second. Uh, it is decently smooth, it's very precise, and has some very pleasant feedback. Uh, these King of Pen nibs are some of my favorite. I really, really enjoy them. They perform outstanding, and they're gorgeous to boot. Um, the knock against this, against this converter uh, that's included in this pen is that it is uh, the capacity isn't that large. You know, it just feels a little bit strange to have a pen, a large, such a large pen with such a smallish converter in here. But personally, it really doesn't bother me that much. You know, I like to change inks a lot, so it just gives me the opportunity to do so so more often. Um, this is not an inexpensive pen. The King of Pens Pro Gear retails for around $750, which is considerable. But is it worth it? You know, for this pen, for me, I would have to say it certainly is. Uh, it is very well crafted. It feels fantastic in the hand. It feels like a valuable pen. You know, I like the Pro Gear and the Pro Gear 2 very, very much. And for the most part, this is the same pen, but just larger. And in my opinion, better. So there you have the Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear, my birthday slash fountain pen day purchase of this past year. You know, I already have an idea what I'd like to pick up for this next year. And all I have to say is that I better start saving now. Uh, and also I might need to order it several months prior in order to for me to receive it in time. Uh, we'll see. I, I still need to do a little bit of research on it. Uh, I don't want to order it in November and get it eight months later. So, okay, now it's time for some measurements some size comparisons, and then a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Sailor King of Pens Pro Gear. Uh, first of all, here it is compared to the Sailor Pro Gear 2. And then here it is with the original Sailor Pro Gear. So you can see that there's a significant amount of difference between those. Then in regards to some other Sailor King of Pen, here is uh, the Ebonite version of the King of Pen. And then here is a Classic Pens LB5, which is slightly larger than that. 
And in regard to just a couple of other pens, uh, here it is with the Mont Blanc 149, and here it is with a Visconti Wall Street. So, here we go with the writing sample for the Sailor King of Pen. Pro Gear. This is a medium 21 karat gold nib, and the ink that we're using today is Pilot Eroshizuku and this is Kujaku. And Kujaku is a real nice uh, kind of bluish green. Uh, in Japanese, it roughly translates to peacock. Uh, and, you know, it's a real nice blue-green that's kind of bordering on teal. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to some Ackerman blau grown, which I am assuming translates to blue-green. Uh, and then here it is with the uh, J. Herban Emerald de Chavor. Now, the... Uh, the Roshizuka bottles, uh, uh, you know, you just can't beat them. Uh, they are some of the best out there, in my opinion. First of all, they look just stylish and cool, but they're also extremely functional. Uh, it's a very narrow bottle, uh, and this indentation on the bottle uh, allows you to get your nib a little bit deeper in there, which helps if you uh, have a, a rather large nib. So anyways, you know, I keep contemplating doing some ink reviews down the line. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. We'll see. Maybe one day. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. I'm going to run out of space. Have to conserve space here at the end. Um, as I had mentioned before, that this nib is just glorious. Uh, you can get uh, a large amount of line variation out of this pen with very little pressure and then increasing. You can see how much of a variance it gets there. Finally railroaded, but I was pushing it quite a bit. Uh, and in regard to wetness, uh, this is a fairly wet nib. You can see here that it's fairly wet. In regard to reverse writing, it's a little scratchy, but it does actually perform very well. And in regard to some fast writing, this nib has no problem whatsoever keeping up. So there you have the Sailor King of Pen Pro Gear, uh, a very special pen, which I am enjoying a great deal. Uh, I thought I'd leave you today with a few shots of the snow that we're receiving in North Carolina here, uh, just to take a look at what's going on outside. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.